Good morning. <clears throat> I'd like to welcome everybody here, everybody online. And I'm going to go ahead and try to get started. So if you would be turning with me to 1 John chapter 5. I'm going to begin in 1 John chapter 5. The first five verses. <clears throat> First John 5, Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And every one that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? Amen. First of all, it says, Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ, in verse 1. There's a lot in this statement itself that we can talk about, but let me mention this. Believing that Jesus is the Christ is more than believing in Jesus. Yes. Believing that Jesus is the Christ means knowing who the Christ is to some extent and knowing what he has done to some extent. Yes, you may not know everything about him, but there is some knowledge you will have of him. You find who Christ is from Genesis to Revelations. It talks about Jesus being the Christ. There is so much in this book from cover to cover. Who can even think of knowing everything about Jesus Christ and what he has done? The Old Testament tells us who the Christ is or would be, you might say, and what he would do. The New Testament tells us who Christ is or was, you might say, and what he has done. We also have in the New Testament that he will again return one day to gather his elect together. There are many specifics on who Christ is and what he has done throughout all Scripture. It does not say you have to know all about him, just to be clear, but you must believe that Jesus is the Christ, this one that is spoken of in this book the one God who has given us a record of in his word. Romans tells us that in order to believe him, you must hear about him through someone sent of God telling you about him. So what about those who believe that Jesus is the Christ? It says here, is born of God. Amen. When it says is born of God here, is it talking about regenerated by the Spirit? that is conceived or converted by the gospel that is brought forth or born, you can say. Yes, both. Right. It's talking about both. You certainly will not believe if you have not been given the ability. But it also says here that whosoever believeth. So it is talking here about those who have been both regenerated and converted. It is not necessarily talking about either one of these things specifically, it is only giving the result of that one who believes this. As I've already said, you will not believe unless you've heard. I want to talk about each of these things just a little more because there are some people out there that might think that one of these is not needed or maybe some make them to be the same thing. There are passages all over the place that give us insight in both of these things and that is being given life from God without using any means at all in giving of that life other than himself and then giving us the gospel so that we will come forth or that is being born of the gospel. That is through the means of the gospel we are brought forth believing. In either case, man is not involved in the birthing of an individual directly. The first he is totally passive in it and the second Man sows or throws out the seed, and there are some who, having been imparted life, receive that word in an honest and good heart. 
That is the heart given in regeneration by God. Amen. This being accompanied by the Spirit of God. The result of all this, once they have heard, is believing. Yes. That is how we know someone loves God, after all. So let's look at some of these. That is some other passages where it specifically speaks of being born. And I want to go to John 3. John 3. Very familiar. We read in verse 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Unless a man is born from above, above or born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. That is to see, know, perceive, or understand. The word used here in its context denotes being born of the Father. That is the way it is used when the Father gives life to someone. As I've already said, you can look at this uh, as conception, that which the Father does. Or that is the male does this, to be more clear. How can I say that? For one, look at the word and the meaning, and it says, to procreate, properly of the Father, but by extension of the mother figuratively to regenerate. But this in and of itself does not explain it completely to us, as we will see. But this word born is not the only word used here. We also have the word again. That word here means from above. So in this context, this word means being fathered specifically. If you are not thus fathered, then you will not be able to know his kingdom, or that is, his gospel. Because the gospel which we preach is the gospel of the kingdom, because it is about the king. We also have the same type of statement in verse 5. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. This one, I believe, is speaking of being born or brought forth of the gospel. Some may not agree with me on this, but this says by water and spirit. Water being the word and the spirit being the spirit of God. Not having this happens means you will not enter or that is come forth into the kingdom of God. Ephesians 5 and 25 through 27 reads this. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. He then goes on to say to Nicodemus not to marvel that he said you must be born again. The Spirit of God goes out to, to whom he is pleased to give life so that they might see. We do not know who or when he came from them, and we do not know who or when he is going to next. We hear the sound of it. We hear those who have been sent the gospel. They confess Christ and believe. This is the way it is done for everyone that is born of the Spirit, Christ says. If you disagree with me that one of these is talking about being born without any means and the other is when the gospel is pro proclaimed, that is fine. I've heard arguments on both sides in this, and I think both make valid points. I just see Christ saying, seeing first and then entering, and these being things that happen at different times. However, if you disagree and say that this word born in both places, or both verses, means only one thing, and that is being born or brought forth of the gospel, the scripture does not bear this out. Let's look at this word used here for born here. This same word is used especially throughout Matthew, 
But there are two examples that is, as it is used the first way, and that is being fathered. Matthew 1 and verse 2 says this, Abraham begat Isaac, and Isaac begat Jacob, and Jacob begat Judas and his brethren. That word begat is the same word used born in John 3 in both places in John. Did Abraham somehow by miracle birth Isaac from his loins and out come a little baby boy? No, it's talking about conception. Isaac came from the seed of Abraham. But then we have Matthew 1 and verse 20. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. The word, word used here for that which is conceived is the same word used in John 3 in those two verses. I think this one's quite clear, isn't it? That Jesus Christ had not been born or that is brought forth yet from Mary's womb? That did happen later for sure. But this is life before birth. birth. Here it's very clear. But let's look further in another way that it's used. Luke 1 and 57. Now Elizabeth's full time came that she should be delivered, and she brought forth a son. This word used here for she brought forth is the same word used in John 3, and here it means she gave birth to a baby. This baby happened to be John the Baptist. This is that baby who was alive already, which was brought forth into the world from her mother, from, from the mother. And one more to make my point. In 1 Corinthians 4.15 it says, For though ye have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. Amen. The word used here for have begotten is the same word used in John 3. Paul is saying here that through the gospel which he proclaimed to them, that some were saved under his preaching. Yes. They came forth in believing the gospel under his preaching. Yes. I know some want to say that when the gospel is preached, this is when men are imparted life by the Spirit of God initially in regeneration. Yeah. I cannot say that life never comes at this, this right. time, right, right. but it is nowhere t it tells us specifically in God's Word. It, it nowhere tells us that specifically. Nor can I tell you if someone has imparted life from God before the gospel comes to them, for sure. It doesn't say this specifically either. I do believe there are passages where both may be indicated at times. I want to be clear here, though. The preaching of the gospel itself does not impart life to a dead alien sinner. It does give life. That is, life to life. Just as bread is for our natural bodies, so is his word to us spiritually. But it never imparts life where there is none. But the fact is, Christ tells us that the Spirit blows where it listeth, and the Spirit comes and goes as he is pleased. Christ also gives us the explanation of the parable of the seed and the sower, in which he says the seed sown falls on a good and honest heart. So the fact is you have to have life first from God Amen. himself without any means before you will ever hear and believe the gospel. Amen. When that happens Amen. is not up to me. It's all up to God. Amen. What we do know is when the gospel is proclaimed, at some point there will be some who come forth in belief of the truth. And that is when you and I know that is, when they confess that Jesus is the Christ, I know they have been born of God. Our passage tells us this. Jesus Christ also tells us in John 3 and verse 6, That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Until you are born of the Spirit of God, you will not have the ability to see or that is understand, and you will not be able to enter into the kingdom of God. 
as Walter pointed out last week, in Adam we are all dead men walking. That's right. Alive naturally, but dead spiritually. And this is literal in both cases, right. as we are born in Adam. Dead men do not eat and drink spiritual meat and drink. That's right. 1 Corinthians 2 and 14 says this, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually dis discerned. I want to ask you, is the gospel of Jesus Christ and him crucified the things of the Spirit of God? Until a man has spiritual life, he cannot receive the things of the Spirit of God. So he has to be made spiritual first by God without any means whatsoever other than God himself. Amen. Yeah. Once he has made thus, the gospel comes forth, and the man or a woman who has been given life is birthed forth in believing. Amen. Just to be clear on these words that I've went over so far, these words, when you look at them in, in the Greek, depending on where they're used, they do have different tenses and stuff, and it can uh, affect how you do it, how you see it. I don't know... Greek. It's difficult for me to know these things by looking them up. But we do have context, which if we read God's Word in context, it will tell us of all this without having to know the Greek specifically. I wished I did know more about Greek. I have to rely on those men who have given us books and tools to use for these types of things, but this is still not easy. But God in His Word tells us everything we need to know already. I think it was Earl that once said something like this. A text without context is just pretext. God helped me not to use something out of co context in order to teach my own doctrine. So what else does it say here in our passage in 1 first, in first John 5? <clears throat> Everyone that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. Amen. So everyone that is born of God, that is, who believes that Jesus is the Christ, also loves others whom have been born of God, yeah. who also believe that Jesus is the Christ. Amen. Does that mean we all agree on everything? No, but we all do believe that Jesus is the Christ. Amen. That Christ spoken of in this word, and we believe what he has done. We believe the record God gave of his son, whether we know it all or not. The Christ is one spoken of specifically throughout the whole scripture, and this Christ that is the anointed one, the Messiah, was spoken of coming to do specific things. But just as Walter has said before, all believers believe the same thing. If we do disagree on something, either one of us is wrong, or both of us are wrong. If anyone, that is me or any, anyone else, does not believe what God says, it is unbelief and not belief at all. <clears throat> God help me and give me an understanding. Help me to be long-suffering with others. Help others to be long-suffering with me. We all must be taught of God, and it is He that gives the increase. What do we have that we have not received? 1 Corinthians 8.2 says this, And if any man think he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. Amen. This tells me we should be long-suffering with one another and not be puffed up with knowledge. How do we know, though, that we love those who are born of God? What does that look like? Is it being nice to one another? Is it doing things for one another? Uh, another? Is it helping one another out? That is believers. It certainly will include these things, but what does this say? It says, we love God and keep his commandments. So what does that mean? It means what it says, but to be clear, what this is saying, let's look at the word keep here. This word for keep here means to watch or to keep or hold. This means that we will keep his word, that his gospel, close to us. Amen. We will watch and keep it close to keep our minds constantly on his word. Yeah. 
This means here, though, that we are keeping an eye on making sure not to lose his word from our thoughts. That we are always ready to defend his gospel. We will continually look to Jesus as the Christ. It basically means we believe Jesus Christ. But because we believe Jesus Christ, we will also do those things he tells us in his word to do. That is because we believe Jesus is the Christ. We will want to walk in his commandments. I want to honor my Lord, but I know I love God's people because I believe Jesus is the Christ. In believing him, I will in turn and by his power and ordination perform those works which he has prepared for me to walk in. I believe that Jesus Christ, that is God manifest in the flesh, has come down. And that it is he that was made sin for me on that cross. And it is he that finished the work to secure my salvation. I also believe it is he that brings that salvation to me in time by giving me life and regeneration and brings me the gospel from someone sent of him when hearing this gospel. I believe it, and he, it is he that gives the increase by his spirit, to which I then believe Jesus Christ and all he says to me in his word. This being done by faith, given me of the spirit of God. But what are some of these things that God teaches us in his word, his commandments? These are just some. There are plenty more in his word, but we have when you talk about commandments, we have the law of God for sure. Yes, sir. These are the commandments of God. But this law kills me when I look at this law because it is absolute and there is no give or mercy in it based on man's ability. Right. Exactly. Since we have no ability, God's law just condemns me to death. Amen. It in no way teaches me how to live in Christ. Right. So what does grace teach? The law of God, that is, the Ten Commandments teaches, Thou shalt not steal. Ephesians 4 and 28 teaches this, Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have, have to give to him that needeth. God tells us in his word about the fruit which comes from him, the fruit of the Spirit. It says in Galatians 5, 22 and 23, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. Just to mention a few more commandments of Christ, and like I said, there's a whole lot more in, in here than these. But just to mention a few. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added. Amen. Love one another. Yeah. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. Yeah. Do not your alms before men. Yeah. Yes. Be subject one to another. Yeah. Husbands, love your wives. We read yeah. that. Believing that Jesus is the Christ will lead you to look, looking to follow his commandments. It is cause and effect. Yeah. If you believe God, you are obeying God. If you are obeying God, you are believing God. Those go together. They cannot be separated. This is just reiterated again by John in our passage in verse 5. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? Amen. Believing that Jesus is the Christ, that is that Jesus Christ is God manifest in the flesh, and it is he that came down to this world conceived of the Holy Ghost, born of a woman, born under the law, that he might redeem them that are under the law. Him doing this by sacrificing not just the death of the cross, but he left glory to come down to this earth. He is the God-man, fully flesh and blood, but fully God at the same time. He had no home to go to. He had no possessions. After all, he was not going to stay here. But he did not just die for us, he sacrificed, or that is, gave up all. Yes. Men, when it comes to loving your wife, you do this. This is what we are exhorted to do, to love our wives as Christ loved the church. Amen. I know I keep saying this in a lot of my messages, but this is my hope. 
He, that is Jesus the Christ, was ultimately hung on that tree where he cried, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Having the weight of my sin on him and in him, but he, that is Jesus who is the Christ which we believe, cried with power and authority, It is finished. Anyone else that would have done this would have been vain talk. Yeah. They would have died and all on this earth would have perished along with them. Right. Yeah. But because he was pleased to show mercy on some and God providing himself the sacrifice for men's sins Amen. did what was needed to satisfy the holy justice of God completely and fully. That is because we know that God is totally holy, just, and righteous. So the one that died had to be a man, but also had to be God. Jesus being the Christ was this. He was the God-man. Yes. Not only that, but this also being shown in that with power and authority, he arose from the grave, not suffering corruption, ascending back to the Father, and was well-pleasing to the Father, yes. where he now sits on the right hand of God, and we with him. It is this very power with which he also gives us spiritual life. Yes. It is with this same power that he also converts us by the gospel, causing us to believe his gospel. It is this same power that keeps us until the day when he returns. Is it important to know that God imparts to us life without any means? Yes, it is. It's in his word. If God had not intended for us to know this, he would not have revealed these things to us. But he did, and I do not apologize for this. Some may think we have an agenda when preaching these things. They would be absolutely correct. Those who preach this have an agenda to preach the truth of God without apology. However, without Jesus, Christ, Jesus being the Christ, there is nothing that would mean anything to anyone. It would all be in vain. But Jesus is the Christ. There is no doubt of that in my mind. If anyone else believes Jesus is the Christ, then I love them. I show this or this is proved out because I believe Jesus is the Christ. If I don't, I'm just a liar. Do you believe that Jesus is the Christ? Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Dear Lord, wonderful, sovereign, holy, merciful God, we thank you for all things. All things come from you. It must be you that opens our hearts, minds, and eyes, ears. It must be you that opens, and no man will shut. Dear Lord, our prayer is that you will open all of our minds here, and if there's any others, that by your power you may open the door that no man will shut. All these things we ask in Christ's name. Amen.